Previously on Ancient Warriors, Legacies of Olympus. I just want to make sure that you think you are doing the right thing. I am. Trust me on this. Ancient boys, go, go. Ancient rangers, ancient boys, ancient boys, go, go. Ancient rangers, ancient boys. Power of the gods will save the day. Defending the earth is the only way. Hey, it's too much. Part 1. Love Turns Tables. Exterior. Evergate Cliffs. Samantha and Riley are sitting on the cliff. It's quiet. Too quiet. But it's kind of peaceful. Yeah. I've missed moments like this. Just you and me. Yeah, me too. Can you believe we've been dating for two years? It's crazy. But now since you're discharged, I get to spend a lot more time with you. So, no more traveling. No more. I'm done traveling. Good. You know, I was thinking, could we go get a drink or something? Yeah, but I need to go check in with the group. Apparently something happened while I was gone. Well, I'd go check it out if I were you. Okay, I'll meet you at Sirens. Okay. Samantha runs off to campus, and Riley heads to Sirens. Interior, Samantha's dorm room. Alex, Ivy, Abigail, and Crow are sitting in a circle trying to decode Hades' message. Samantha walks in. This is crazy! He's trying to trick us. What do you think, Ivy? Even though I'm a genius, this one baffles me. What's going on, guys? Abigail, Crow, Ivy, and Alex turn around. Crow passes Samantha the scroll they got, and she reads it over. Am I reading this right? Mm -hmm. Hades is trying to protect us from Zeus? Is that a thing? Apparently it is now. Where did Marco and Anthony go? They said they had to go take care of something. Okay. I was just getting ready to have a drink with Riley if anyone wants to join me. I might take you up on that offer. Me too. Crow, can I talk to you outside? Sure. Abigail and Crow leave and head outside. What's up? Don't you find it a little weird that Anthony and Marco kind of just snuck off? A little bit, yeah, but I'm sure it's nothing to worry about. They'll be back before you know it. Well, I'm going to the forest to wait for them. You can join me if you want. Abigail runs off into the woods, and Crow chases after her. They stop behind a tree. Look, Abby, I'm sure whatever those two are doing is completely the same. Meanwhile, in the underworld, Anthony and Marco are standing in front of Emily Sitak's grave. Anthony pulls the spell out of his back pocket. Anthony. You're being insane. You've known this girl for three years as a friend, and now you want to marry her? You two haven't even been dating that long. Are you sure you want to do this? Well, everyone sees loves in different ways. I have known Abby for three years, and she's my official girlfriend now. She told me things about her life, and I told her things, too, about my life. Like We have a trust that no one can break. I love that girl, man. With all of my heart, and I want to spend the rest of my life with her. Okay, as long as you know she'll always be there for you. She will be. Trust me, I know how. I know she will. Now, let's hope this works. Anthony begins to read the spell. With those who still hold faith in those who love, be awakened by their call for the one true love. For this, I ask you to rise, Emily Testak. To make your daughter's dreams finally come true at last. The top of Emily's grave begins to crack open, and a ghost form of Abigail and Crow's mom appears before Marco and Anthony. I heard your call, Adon. Seems you have a question for me, I hear? Yes, um, I would like to ask you your permission to- I'm going to stop you right there. Permission? Permission? This sounds like a long, windy road, Adone. It's not, I promise. Really? Well, then I have a few questions to ask you. Sure. 
How do I know you won't be like Neptune? Anthony is nothing like our father. Was I asking you, Atlas? No, but... You know, Adone, nothing is going to come easily for you once you marry Abigail. What do you mean? You know, she is very self-absorbed. She has a lot of issues. I'm not sure you're ready for all of those issues, Adone. She can be very moody sometimes. Not the Abigail I know. Oh? What is she like around you? Oh, come on. She's funny, sweet, kind. She has been my best friend since day one of freshman year at Archimedes University. She's very concerned about others. And the list just keeps going. But most of all, she loves me and I love her. I wouldn't change anything about the relationship that me, her and I have. Emily slow claps and walks up to Anthony. <laughs> Good. You passed. Wait, passed? He passed what? My test. You must really love my daughter if you want to marry her. You have my blessing. Trust me, I've been watching you two. You will be very happy together. Thank you. But I would be careful. If her father hears wind of this, he will do anything to protect his baby girl. And I do mean anything. Anthony and Marco leave the underworld and head back to the forest. Marco and Anthony are walking through the forest back to campus. Abigail is standing next to a tree waiting for them. I knew I would find you two here. Anthony and Marco stop dead in their tracks and turn around. How did you... Took a lucky guess. Anthony and I come out here all the time just to talk, think, look at the stars. Where's Crow? Behind me. Crow comes from behind Abigail. I told you they'd be back soon. So when do you guys graduate? Sunday. Which is in two weeks. The room is all yours. I mean, unless you don't want to stay with Ivy. I can live with staying with a girl for another semester. I'll be fine. What about you two? Where are you guys going to go? Getting an apartment downtown. It'll be nice. Wait, hold up. Together? Yeah. What? You think we're going to get separate apartments? Abigail laughs. Marco, I've known your brother and have been dating him long enough to know that I think we can live with moving in with each other. Exactly. It'll be great. Abigail. Yeah? Can I talk to you in private? Yeah? Abigail and Marco move away from them. What's up? My brother. That's what's up. I'm sorry. What? You're gonna hurt my brother. I would never! Your brother means the world to- Oh. I know this perspective. It's the older siblings get that their younger sibling might die syndrome. And you have it. What? What? No, I don't. Anthony's your younger brother. You're just scared that he could die. Am I wrong? Okay, fine. I'm scared. I don't want him to get hurt. He won't get hurt. I'll make sure nothing happens to him. As long as you make sure that nothing happens to my brother. Deal. Abigail and Marco walk back over to Anthony and Crow. I, uh, need to speak with Anthony for a little bit. Sure. Alone? Oh. Crow smirks and gives them a playful wink. Bye, guys. Abigail grabs Anthony's hand, and they run deeper into the woods. Marco and Crow check to see if they are gone. So, does the group know? It's been some time. Of course they don't know. Can we tell the group, please? Nah. Come on, Crone. Please. Say my god name again, Atlas. I dare you. Crone. Atlas. Crow, it has been a while. I'm tired of hiding. We're going to have to tell them sometime soon. Why? Haven't you seen how happy Abigail and Anthony are? When Anthony first told me about the fact that he liked Abigail and they started dating, he wouldn't stop talking about her. Look, Crow, I love you. You love me? Yeah, isn't it kind of obvious? No, but hold up. You love me? Yeah, why wouldn't I? No one has ever really loved me before. I don't know what to say. You don't have to say I love you back now. I'm just saying... But right now, the people that know that we even exist as a thing are Abigail and Anthony. I want people to know. Are you sure you want to do that? What are you so afraid of? My father. Marco went silent. You think he'll accept this? 
There's no way with all the gods combined he would approve of us. Yeah, but you saw the note that Hades sent us. Should we really be afraid of your father? You heard what Hades said. Don't trust Zeus. Marco and Crow stand in silence. Meanwhile, back in the forest, Abigail and Anthony are sitting under a tree together. They are looking up at the stars. Starlight, star bright. The first star I see tonight. I wish I may, I wish I might. I have the wish I wish tonight. We'll make a wish and do as dreamers do. Abigail and Anthony kiss. <laughs> Can you believe this is where we had our first date? Yeah. It's crazy how things come all full circle. Yeah. So, what did you want to talk about with me? Well, uh, I discovered something while you were gone. Wait, what was it? Look at my hands. Why? Just trust me. Abigail rubs her hands together and a little spark comes out of her hands and it's green. She expands it. You have lightning? It's in my blood. Isn't that so cool? When did you discover this? I don't know. After you left, I kind of just was testing to see if I had any powers. Looks like you do. Abigail shocks Anthony. He jumps. Hey! Dude, not cool! Abigail is laughing. <laughs> Come on, it was really funny! No, it wasn't. Abigail's lightning shows up in her hand again. Anthony stares at her hand in fear, terrified. Okay, maybe it was a little funny, but please don't hurt me. Oh my god, I'm not going to hurt you! Look, it's only two more weeks of this crap left, and then... We're out. Abigail and Anthony high-five. Oh, do you want to go to Sirens? I hear that Riley and Samantha will be there. Yeah, let's go. Abigail and Anthony leave to go to Sirens. Meanwhile, still in the forest, Medusa and Cal are on Earth together to quietly search for the Orb of Chaos. Do you see it? Does it look like I do? Ugh, I gotta prove my father wrong. I can find this stinking orb. Out of the corner of Medusa's eye, she sees Crow and Marco arguing. Wait. What? Shh. They'll hear us. I'm hoping one of them will slip up and tell us where the orb is. I guess I'll listen. Medusa and Cal start to listen to Marco and Crow's conversation from far away. I got the no trusting Zeus part. But it's Hades. Hasn't he been... I don't know. Known to lie? Yes, but my father has treated Abigail and I like crap for our whole lives. You just think you know better because you're the one protecting the orb. Medusa and Cal are whispering to one another. Here we go. Wow, can they really be this stupid? Back at Crow and Marco arguing. Yes, yes I do. I've hidden it where no one will ever find it. Yeah, and where might that be? In your dorm room? A safe? Under your bed? Not in my dorm room. In Samantha's. Why on earth would you put it there? Because if someone tries to steal it, she'll have no hesitation but to fight them and or kill them. Actually, that makes sense. I'm glad we're back on the same page. Me too. Alright, sorry for earlier. I just get so hot-headed sometimes. Let me make it up to you. How about date night at Sirens, the new bar downtown? Sounds good. Awesome. Let's go. Crow and Marco head toward Sirens. Meanwhile, back with Medusa and Cal. Wow, that was easy. Stop with all the talking. We need to go to Samantha's room now. Meanwhile, at Sirens. To happiness, love, and friendship. May we have the time of our lives tonight. They drink their glasses and take a shot. A few shots too many later. <laughs> I can't wait to get out of this uh, forsaking school. Oh, demons, I guess the fun starts now. Why, you are getting so down on yourself. Moving in with the love of your life? Ooh, let me see the key to your place again. No. No to what? Life. What did the ancient Greeks wear on their feet? What now? Tennis suits. Get it? Like tennis shoes? <laughs> Shut up. Abigail shocks Crow with lightning. Oh. How shocking. Um, where did that come from? Abigail. Because we're superheroes. Shut up, idiot. Sam, what is he talking about? 
warriors. Huh? We are stinking ancient warriors. Can you get that through your head? We have to save the day and whatnot. Sam, why didn't you tell me this? I was waiting for the right moment. I... I... I need to go. Riley runs out of sirens, angry and confused. Thanks, guys, for absolutely nothing. Samantha runs out, frustrated at Marco, Abigail, Crow, and Anthony. Well, I'm gonna keep drinking. Who's with me? Sure. Me and Anthony are gonna go. Have fun. Abigail and Anthony leave sirens. End of part one.